And now for something completely different. Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story. The whole enchilada. It's the Lance Robert Show. Presented by Clarity Financial. It's life, money, and sweat equity. Now, welcome in to the Lance Robert Show. And welcome to the Lance Roberts Show. Um, interesting day on Wall Street today as uh, the markets did a redo of September 15th, 2008. Um, yeah, absolutely right. September the 15th, 2008, I'm sitting in an apartment that had just sold my home. And my wife and I were in an apartment waiting to move into our new house. And Hurricane Ike comes blowing through Houston, Texas, wiping out a lot of the Houston area, of course, getting massive rainfalls. The power goes out. At the same time, Lehman Brothers forced into bankruptcy and the Dow begins its, well, three, four week decline, uh, of course, following that whole Lehman contagion. Well, today the markets are down. 818 points here at the close. We're still settling out here, 94 points down on the S&P. Uh, this is a, clearly a route, uh, you know, across the entire financial market spectrum today at a time where Hurricane Michael, Category 4, making landfall with 155 mile an hour wind. So I don't know if there's an actual, you know, a correlation between market declines like this and hurricane, <laughs> hurricane landfalls, but uh, certainly a, a situation that people woke up to today because for the last several weeks, and we'll be talking with Michael Leibowitz, CFA, here in just one moment, but for the last several weeks, we've been talking about the fact that rising interest rates are going to matter to the markets. It was just a question of when and at what level, and we found out what that level was today, about 3.22%, and of course, markets today down across the board, Dow down about 823 points right now. Let's talk about a couple of important things for the markets uh, here over the next few days. This is going to be critically important uh, for investors to pay attention to. First thing is, is that we have now violated these, this previous support level, which was the top of the January highs. So back in January, we set a high. And over the course of the last couple of weeks in particular, we have been very closely trying to hang on to that high level. And that support has been in place here for the last few weeks. We broke through that decisively today. And not only did we break that um, support level of those January highs, we have also violated the uptrend that had been in place since really April, uh, March and April lows of this year. So technically, we have done some very important damage to the markets on a short-term basis. This is something you need to definitely pay attention to. The question is, is what's going to happen next? Now, the thing is, is we don't want to panic sell into a decline. This is the first thing that investors tend to do wrong is that the markets sell off like this. The first thing they do is they just start selling everything tomorrow morning. Uh, be a little cautious here because the markets are on a short-term basis very oversold. Let's take a look at uh, a little bit different look at this chart here for just a moment. This is a, a, a daily chart. This yellow line is the overbought oversold conditions of the market. When the markets have historically been this oversold as they are right now, the markets have typically found at least a short-term bounce. Now, this is important to talk about because when we start talking about what may happen next here, importantly, this support line that we just talked about a minute ago, which is currently running right around 2880, is now going to be overhead resistance for the markets. Look for a bounce that takes us back to that level that potentially doesn't get above that line. A failure at that resistance level is going to suggest the markets are going to go into a continued correction here over the next month or so. And we definitely want to understand that because we want to use that rally. And this is what we'll be doing in portfolios is using that rally to lift positions, raise some cash, be looking at some alternatives to add hedges to the portfolios and reduce overall market risk. And again, this is the thing that, that you want to really understand more importantly, because we are currently doing, uh, have, have some action in the markets that currently suggests that something more important may be occurring. I've talked about this over the last several weeks in particular, that we have now started the, the process of forming a head and shoulders topping pattern where we have now established a left shoulder, which was the high from the breakout in January. We then retested that support level, the January high, rallied to a new high, that was the head, and now we're potentially forming the right-hand side of the shoulder. So where this rally goes to, if it does not set, the, the, the market will have to rally from here and set an all-new all high in order to negate this pattern. But anything that comes into a lower 
right hand shoulder and a, then a subsequent failure of support below that is going to be indicative of a bigger decline in the markets. I was just talking to a good friend of mine that we'll be talking about here in a second about this very pattern that occurred previously. And the last time we saw this was in the markets back in 2007 and 2008, where we established a, a period of a left shoulder, a head, and a right shoulder, and then a failure of that breakdown, which led to the financial crisis of 2008. We're currently in the process of potentially trying to do that very same thing, an early correction in the markets that led to a rally, a left shoulder, a right shoulder, and now we're looking to see what happens next, that potentially we may see a topping pattern in place, something we've discussed before here, but something we'll pay attention to because a broader topping pattern in the, in the markets will dictate a deeper decline if it completes. So again, this isn't something to suggest that you should go out today and sell everything you own. Absolutely not. The point here is, is that we have a very different environment currently. We've been talking about the issues, what's going on in the markets. We've got earnings, which are great from the beginning of this year, but those year-over-year -year comparisons and earnings are going to start to wear off beginning first quarter of next year. A lot of the stimulus that came in from all the hurricanes and, and uh, forest fires last year beginning to come out of the market. So we're going to see some weaker economic data coming in the months ahead. And we've got rising interest rates. Interest rates slow everything. Now, one thing we're going to be talking about in a little bit later on the show today is about some of the wealth gap in the, in the, in the world that we live in. You know, for if you're in the top 20% of the economy, well, a stock market sell-off, sure, it hurts a little bit, but really it doesn't make that much of a difference to you financially. Interest rates affect everybody. Of all, in, of all income brackets, of all ages, of all races, interest rates get everybody from credit cards to mortgages to car notes to uh, any type of variable rate debt, costs are going up. So the higher that interest rates go, the more important that it becomes to people of lower income brackets that have very little discretionary income to play with. So again, what's happening now in the markets may be very important. We'll know about it in the next few days. So as this continues to develop, look to raise some cash. Any rally today, uh, tomorrow or Friday and into next week, use rallies to raise a little bit of cash. Think about adding some hedges to portfolios. And then, depending on what happens after that, we can make some other decisions. The one thing you don't want to do is to ignore this action that's currently happening because this could develop in a bigger, broader sell-off much more quickly than people expect. Guggenheim Partners out today su suggesting that we may have just started a bigger 30% correction. It's a little bit early to say that just yet because we haven't even violated the uptrend from the 2015 lows, but we are sitting on that support. Anything that breaks that trend from the 2015-2016 lows is going to be the beginning of a much broader correction in the markets. Take a quick break. We're going to come back, pick up with Michael Leibowitz, CFA. Talk some more about what happened in the markets day, interest rates, and your money. Don't go away. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet. Sign up for Lance's newsletter now at lancerobertshow.com.